So when it comes to Hackintoshing, you have quite a few options. The one that I talk about the most on this channel is doing a vanilla install using something like Clover or OpenCore, but that can be kind of time consuming and it's also pretty hardware specific. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set up a macOS VM that is pretty simple to do and that pretty much anyone can do. Now there are technically two parts to this guide. There's a the first part, which is just a basic macOS VM software acceleration basic mouse and keyboard inputs. And then there's the second part of the guide, which is things like GPU pass-through, um, hardware acceleration, and just a better macOS experience allows you to use apps more freely. However, the second part is quite challenging and it's also very hardware specific. The first part of this guide is pretty simple. Anyone can do it really. Setting up a basic VM is not very hard and if you meet the requirements of the VM, which pretty much everybody does, then you're good to go. The second part of this guide is a lot more challenging, requires a lot more knowledge. So if you don't know many technical terms, if you're not familiar with Linux commands and you're not willing to put in a lot of work yourself, it's not going to be worth it. I'm not going to be covering how to go through the second part, but I will leave a link and some guides down below on how to do it. It's fairly straightforward, but it does require a lot of tweaking and it's very hardware specific to you. So again, the first part can be done by pretty much anybody, but the second part requires a lot more knowledge and a lot more patience and time and effort on your part. The second part does require you to do the first part though, so I will be covering that later in the guide. In order to create our macOS VM, we will be using something called Kimu. Now we could use Windows for our OS, but I like to use Linux because in general, it's just a lot lighter and we want to allocate as many resources as possible to our VM. My OS of choice is Manjaro, which is Arch, based off Arch Linux. And I highly recommend that you use Manjaro too if you want to follow along with this guide step-by-step. Step. I will provide the code for Arch-based distros, Red Hat-based distros, and Debian distros though for this entire guide. The requirements for a basic macOS VM are fairly simple. You just need a CPU that supports the SSE 4.2 instruction set, which pretty much all Intel CPUs since first generation do and all Ryzen CPUs do. And you'll also need 64 gigabytes of free space. This is also a guide for desktop only, so your mileage may vary if you're trying to do it on a laptop. Okay, so once you have your OS installed, we'll need to install some dependencies. If you're on an Arch-based distro, open terminal and type sudo pacman-sy kimu python python-pip git and hit enter. If you're not using an Arch-based distro, type one of the commands on screen for Red Hat distros and Debian distros. This will install kimu, which is our emulator, Python, which is used for a lot of programs, and Python pip, which allows us to install more dependencies, and git, which will allow us to clone files from the internet. Now type pip install click requests and hit enter. This will install dependencies that we need in order for this to work. Luckily for us, user Foxlit on GitHub has already done a lot of the groundwork in order for us to set up our macOS VM. We can download it by typing git clone and then this URL, and this will create a folder with all of the files that we need. In Manjaro, you can access it by clicking on the file icon on the left side and then the home tab. We'll need to do some setup though before we can use the VM, so open up a terminal and type cd macOS-simple-kvm then type dot slash jumpstart.sh, followed by two dashes and the version of macOS that you want. Currently you can choose from High Sierra, Mojave, or Catalina. Then type kimu dash img create dash f qcow2 mydisk.qcow2, make sure that my disk is capitalized as such, and then 64G, or 64 is the amount of space in gigabytes that you want to allocate to the VM. You will need a minimum of 64 gigabytes. Now go back to the file explorer and open basic.sh from inside the macOS simple KVM folder by right clicking on the file and opening using the text editor. We'll need to add two lines to the end of the file, which I will put up on screen right now. Make sure you type them exactly as they're shown in the video and then save the file and exit once you're done typing them. Okay, once you've exited out, we're now ready to boot our VM for the first time. Open a new terminal and type cd macOS-simple-kvm and then type dot slash basic dot sh. This will load our VM for the first time. When Clover loads, select the macOS installer by using your arrow keys and then pressing enter. Open disk utility and click on view and then show all devices. Select the drive that has roughly the amount of space that you allocated earlier and then format it as APFS and GUID partition map. Exit disk utility once it's done and then continue installing macOS. It took a few hours for me, so you can take some time to do something else. It'll restart on its own and then you can continue with the installation by selecting the name of your drive in the Clover bootloader. If your mouse seems to get caught and you can't drag farther than a certain point, then press Control-Alt-G and then readjust your mouse. This will switch between keyboard and mouse inputs 
for the VM and Linux. Okay, so if you have anything other than a 720p monitor, now we're going to change the resolution via Clover. So once you're Mac OS, open a terminal and type diskutil list. Mount the EFI partition of the first entry by typing sudo diskutil mount disk zero S1, where zero is the number of the disk and one is the number of the partition. Open Finder and then open the EFI partition and navigate to EFI, Clover, and then config.plist and open it with text edit. We'll need to change the resolution through Clover by finding the option for screen resolution and changing the value to 1920 by 1080 or whatever your screen resolution is. After you've done that, save the file and then shut down the VM. Restart it by running dot slash basic dot sh again and then pressing escape when you start up the VM. It will bring up a command line. Type exit and then hit enter and now you'll see a BIOS like screen. Navigate to device manager, then OVMF platform configurator and change the resolution to whatever you set it in your config.plist. Once you're done, press F10, Y to save and then exit out of the menus and press continue to boot your VM with a new resolution. So now you have a basic macOS VM, but how about changing the CPU and memory allocation so that you can allocate more to your VM? Well, we can change the amount of memory by opening the basic.sh file in a text editor and then changing the line that says dash M to G to a different value, for example, eight G for eight gigabytes of RAM, 16 G for 16 gigabytes of RAM and so on. To change the amount of cores and threads the VM can access, replace the line that says dash SMP four comma cores equals two with dash SMP CPUs equals X, cores equals X, threads equals one, sockets equals one, where X is the number of threads that you want to allocate. And if you want to allocate more than eight threads, then change the number of sockets accordingly. So for example, 32 threads means that you would allocate four sockets. Now, once you're done, save and exit out and you can boot your VM back up with the new resources allocated. Okay, so now that we have our basic VM, you can either choose to use it as is, or you can go on to part two of this guide, which is enabling hardware acceleration. This generally makes the experience smoother in general in macOS and also enables hardware acceleration for programs that support it. I won't be covering how to do it since it's kind of complicated and is highly hardware specific but I will leave two guides down in the description below. Start with the first one and then go to the section that says switching to vert manager. You will need to start there before going on to the second link. Generally, all CPUs will work, but you will need two GPUs if you don't have integrated graphics. All 700 series GPUs, except for the 750 Ti, will work in Mojave and Catalina and High Sierra and support for 900 and 10 series GPUs. For AMD GPUs, unfortunately, anything older than Hawaii is going to work, but anything new newer than the Hawaii microarchitecture, so like RX 570, RX 580, all that stuff is not going to work in macOS. You will also need uh, a GPU that has uh, supports UEFI booting. So in terms of AMD GPUs and NVIDIA GPUs, your selection is very, very limited. All right, that's all for this video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below or join the Discord and you can ask me there.